Hey everybody, Jason here from my Animate. Hopefully you're having a fantastic week so far. So in this week's snippet, we're going to talk about blocking and the best way to get more appealing poses. So when I'm blocking in a shot, what I'm trying to do is create appealing poses, right? Appealing poses that are going to resonate and be relatable uh, for an audience member, right? And to try and find that way of delivering the line in as few poses as possible is always better than putting in too many poses, right? So when I was first learning how to animate, I had a tendency to put in uh, way too many poses, almost like a pose for every line of dialogue or every even almost every loud word, I would have like almost a completely different pose. And what it would end up being is uh, a lot of confusing kind of messages, right? And almost the best way to think about doing shots is how can I make this shot in as few poses as possible? So in last week's snippet, we showed you the my 2D process, right? So basically like you're trying to find like the, the main poses that I wanted to use um, and then shoot live action reference, right? To find the right way of, um, of telling the story naturally, right? And then what I'm trying to do in blocking is trying to find those storytelling poses and then create poses out of those, uh, out of that live action reference, right? So for instance, right? So we have uh, very few poses here, right? So if I just pick on here, you'll see that I've only got like, let's see, I don't know, like eight poses or something. And some of these are actually breakdowns, right? Some of them are actually transitional poses, right? So if I'm looking at this first pose here, uh, my eyes are closed, like for number one, and then it looks like I'm trying to uh, anticipate this move across here, right? Which is fine, right? Like because that'll be sort of like a transitional thing, and then this will be basically the first pose that we end up with, right? Um, and then what I'm looking at is sort of like the angle of the head, the expression, um, you know, the the angles of the body, like, and then trying to make it somewhat, make it feel somewhat natural, like, and make it feel nice and feminine too, right? So what I'm trying to do is uh, bring the elbow in here a little closer to the body. And then as I'm trying to work through these poses, what I like to do is actually set another pose next to that key, right? So if I'm working on pose 22 here, frame, frame 22, set another key there, and then start to kind of play with it just to see if I can make it more appealing, right? So if I'm looking at, let's say, uh, this elbow sort of over here, which is up in the air, and it, you know, it was a conscious decision that I made at the time, but like, you know, maybe if I, if I grab that elbow, and bring it a little closer to the body. Like, will that make it feel a little bit more feminine and um, rather than out, out where it was out here, you know? And like maybe something like that might feel a little bit more feminine and a little bit more uh, in line with what, what she's actually feeling, you know? Like she's studying here, right? So I don't wanna make big arm gestures, right? So it, she's quite contained, right? And then like, you know, even with the, the arm here and I've got like this other arm, in uh, pinned to the to the table, right? But if I grab both of these together and just sort of shift them over, like with my my arrow key and my alt key, like can I make that feel a little bit more feminine? Now we're getting a little close to the ear here, uh, so I don't want to create a tangent there. But what if I basically grab this hand and rotate it outwards? You know, like will that feel a little bit more feminine? And sort of like if, if I if you remember back to my my two D. I had sort of like a 45 degree angle on that hand, like so it was something a little bit more like this, which creates a bit of a weird shape here. So I feel like, you know, going somewhere around here, um, oh, it was actually a 90 degree angle. So somewhere around here would create like more of a 45 degree angle. And then, you know, maybe like if I turn this hand a little bit this way, it might give us a little bit of a prettier silhouette on these fingers and make the hand feel a little smaller, right? Um, expression wise, like, you know, I want to create something that's a little bit more questioning here, but like, see the way like this line right here at the end of the brow, it's, if I draw like a continuation line, it sort of flows up to this, but not quite, right? So what if I just go into the, the, uh, the picker here, and let's say if I pick on this and make it, make it a little lower or make it a little higher, you know, maybe push it a little further over. You know, can I make that sort of line up a little bit better? Maybe, maybe not go quite as severe with this angle here with the brown, maybe bring it a little closer like this, like that. And then I made a couple of adjustments there. So now like if I just pick on, 
on anything. It doesn't really matter, like any control. Um, and basically just kind of have a look to see, like, does that make it feel any better as a pose, right? Because it's, it's right next to that pose, right? So I'm making just little teeny tiny adjustments. And, but what I'm trying to do is create this window of time pose, right? A golden pose, right? Where this is basically where she's, her animation is going to spring from. And actually, you know, we're going to create a moving hold out of this pose. So I'm trying to make these poses feel as natural and as nice as possible. Like think about like as if you're going to be paid, let's say $10,000, right? To make a beautiful pose that you're going to put up on a wall. And think about each pose like that, right? And these are not transitional poses. This is a pose that you're going to rest on, but the animation will surround this pose and support this pose, right? So you're trying to create something that feels really natural and believable. And in this way, if I treat all of my poses like this, and like, again, just making small adjustments, flip back and forwards, you know, to see what has changed, what hasn't changed. And if you like it better, then overwrite that last pose, right? And that way you're not destroying anything. Like you don't have to go back to it like a previous version of the shot or anything. And you're not kind of making changes on an actual pose that you want to keep. So I usually just kind of create that second keyframe and then flip back and forwards and see if it's something that I want to, uh, to keep or to say, no, you know, it was better before. So that's the way I like to think about blocking. So blocking for me is a key on absolutely every single animatable attribute, right? So a key on everything, as if I'm creating a drawing, right? So the drawing encapsulates everything that I want. So the angle of the head, you know, the slight asymmetry in the mouth, the, the eyebrow, you know, the way that's asymmetrical too, you know, the finger poses. So I want to set a key on absolutely everything as if I'm creating a drawing like a storyboard artist, right? And then that way, uh, when, I, when I go to break it down, to break down the animation, then everything that I'll do will spring from that actual pose. So I'm not offsetting anything. I just want to create like a nice pose to make sure that everything feels as, as nice as possible, like as, as uh, you know, as natural as possible. Okay. So that's my tip for the day. All right. All of us, you guys have a great one and we'll see you again next time. Bye.